I'm going to go to 14.4, which is buoyancy. Now, buoyancy is caused by the fact that pressure changes with depth. So the very first thing we have to understand here to understand 14.4 is if you have a swimming pool or a beaker or anything else that's got an appreciable depth, we need to understand how pressure changes with depth. Okay, so the way you do that is you do this. You imagine a little cylinder. Could be a cube, by the way, but the cylinder may be nicer. You imagine a little cylinder, and uh, here's the top of the pool, okay? And the top of the cylinder then is a distance D top down from the top of the pool. And the bottom of the cylinder is a dis distance D bottom down from the bottom of the pool. So we've got depth of the top and depth of the bottom. Now, water has pressure in it everywhere. This is like a tin can or something, except this tin can's full of water, okay? So this is kind of an imaginary tin can. It's a tin can that you're kind of imagining in the pool. On the top side of the tin can, the pool is pushing on the top of the can. And on the bottom side of the tin can, the pool water is pushing on the bottom side. And on this side of the tin can, the pool water is pushing that way. And on this side of the tin can, the pool water is pushing that way. And actually, on every, you, uh, if you kind of looked at this side of the tin can, the side that's closest to you, yeah, the pool water would be pushing in on that side. And if you looked at the side that was farthest from you, on the far side of the tin can, the pool water would be pushing back towards us on the back side. Now all these ones, they balance, okay? Whatever force the pool water is pushing on that side of the tin pan balances with whatever the force the pool water is pushing on that side of the tin can. And that little bit of force balances with that little bit of force. And that little bit of force balances with that little bit of force. But here's the tricky part. This is not going to balance with that. How do we know that? Well, because this tin can has some volume, okay? And now we could say that uh, the top of this tin can has an area A and the bottom of this tin can has an area A. And we can see that its height is D top. Uh, the way I did it there, it's D bottom minus D top. So there's its height is D bottom minus D top. And then if we said its area is A, then the volume of this tin can is D bottom minus D top times A. And if this can is full of water, which has a density rho, then the mass of this, all this stuff in this can is the volume, d bottom minus d top times a, times the density, rho. And we're not going to worry about the density changing with depth. We're only going to worry about pressure changing with depth. You might think that's a little weird, but it turns out water is extremely incompressible, so its density does not change much with, with depth at all. Even though its pressure changes a lot with depth, it's just a fact about water. So d bottom minus d top times a times rho is the mass of this thing. Now the mass of this thing is that gravity's pulling down on this thing. So we can draw a free body diagram for this. It's got some mass, and there's mg down on it. It's got all these forces that are pushing in on the sides, but we've already argued that those are balanced. Then it's got the force on the top of the can, which is clearly pushing down on the can, so that's pushing that way, and we'll call that F top. And then it's got some force that's on the bottom of the can, and it's pushing up. Now this can is not shooting anywhere up or down, so all these forces must balance. So now we've learned that F on the bottom minus F on the top minus FMG must equal zero, because this isn't going anywhere. This is a statics problem. So F bottom minus F top minus MG is equal to zero. 
Well, rearrange that a little bit. That says that F bottom is equal to F top plus MG. Now put in what the rest of the stuff that you know. What else do you know here? Well, I've introduced the concepts of density and pressure for a reason. I'm going to use everything I know now. Okay? So F on the bottom is equal to the pressure at the bottom times the area of the bottom. F on the top is equal to the pressure on the top times the area of the top. And this was a nice even cylinder, so the area of the top and the bottom are the same. And then there's one more term on the right-hand side. I get plus mg. Now, I already though argued, though, that m was rho times d, the depth of the bottom minus the depth of the top times the area, and of course we have g here, okay? So that's the equation we've just learned. Get a load of this, the area cancels out. So we've just learned something. that the, We've learned how pressure varies with depth. And we can say p top, p bottom, Minus P top, so P bottom is going to be more than P top. How much more pressure is there at P bottom than there is at P top? There's rho times D bottom minus D top. G. So now you know how pressure varies as a function of depth. Now, by the way, this is what causes buoyancy. The reason that, say, uh, something weighs less when you stick it in water. So, like, if I have a weight and I'm hanging on to it, and then I have a beaker here of water, and I hang the weight over the water while I'm having to hold it up. But if I lower the weight into the water, It'll feel like it weighs less. How much less? Well, we'll get into that on Monday, but it will feel like it weighs less. And why is that? Well, for the exact same reason, the exact same kind of reasoning that we used when we just calculated how pressure varies with depth in water. Here we have something we've stuck into the water. On this side of it, there's force of water, but whatever's on this side balances whatever's on that side. Because pressure varies with depth, whatever water is pushing on the bottom side is more than what water is pushing on the top side. So this thing, um, from my perspective, has had some of the weight taken off of it. I say from my perspective, I mean from the perspective of my hand, which is trying to hold up this thing, some of the weight has been, been relieved from me because the water is pushing harder on the bottom of this thing than on the top of this thing. And that is the source of buoyancy, actually. And that is uh, discussed nicely by night in section 14.4. And uh, this would be a great time for you to go check out 14.4. And we'll play with that and do some problems and some elaborations on Monday. And... Sadly, that'll be our entire and only day on pressure. And that way we can spend the whole last of the week of the class working on waves, which is the subject of 16 and 17.